So I'm pretty sure I haven't said this in my comments section in like a week, so I'll say it again here. The new Tribe Called Quest album is amazing and you should really listen to it. And now let's talk about some NBA rookies, as um... We're like, what, 30 games into the season or something like that? I'd say it's enough of a sample size to get an idea about some of the rookies in the NBA right now. So we're just gonna go down the list, see who's good, who sucks, who Harella Bob's least favorite player in the NBA is, or at least starter is, and then we'll all feel good about ourselves in the end, or something, I have no idea. And also, we're gonna use Jalen Brown and Jamal Murray footage as the video here because I'm a biased Celtics fan and I want to use Jalen Brown and shout out to Jamal Murray as well and what I want to do is I want to go down number one through ten as well as Joel Embiid and Dario Saric but I also want to name a couple of rookies who were not in the top ten who have actually been uh, pretty exciting so far so uh, I mean let's just start with Joel Embiid of course he's the rookie of the year he's the best player out of everybody so far I made a video talking about how he could be the next Hakeem Olajuwon so I think that pretty much sums up how I feel about him. His low post game, of course it needs to improve, but he's already shown an ability to turn over both shoulders, he's got spin moves, he's got some pump fakes, he's shown turnaround jumpers, he's an athlete as a center, which means he can run up and down the floor really well, he can be used in a pick and roll, he can catch an alley-oop, it also means he's a hell of a defensive player. Someone who can provide help defense as well as protect the rim really well. And he's good from three, so... Sky's the limit for Joel Embiid. Besides that, there are a couple other rookies who've done stuff. Dario Saric of the 76ers. For the season, he's putting up nine points and six boards. Which is not bad. While shooting 36% from three. And... He had a stretch there of about three or four games. Where he was looking pretty damn impressive. He put up uh, 21 points against the Celtics. He had a pair of 17-point games as well as a 13-point game. And in that time, he uh, showed an ability as a spot-up three-point shooter. If the offense is doing their thing and he ends up open, he can knock something down for you. He showed a nice ability to rotate off of Joel Embiid pick and rolls, so the point guard's doing some with Embiid, and he kind of finds the right spot to where the ball handler can see him. He actually showed... Uh, a little bit of ball handling against opposing big men, which resulted in a, uh, a step back shot for him that went in. He had a running hook shot that looked good. Uh, he also had a couple of moments where he cut inside at the right moment. So, seems like a smart offensive player. He hasn't adjusted to the NBA just yet, but I think Saric as an offensive guy can be something. And potentially could be the right power forward next to Embiid if he can continue to shoot well from outside as well as mid-range. Now let's talk about Malcolm Brogdon of the Milwaukee Bucks. Eight points per game, 43% from three. I don't care if you're a rookie or an eight-year veteran, that is damn good from outside. And he's been a floor spacer for the Milwaukee Bucks, playing over 20 minutes a game for them. And while he has been good at that, he also has shown some ability to create his own shot. He has cut inside uh, to receive a pass from a ball handler. He's actually been using screens to get like little 10 foot bank shots for himself or floaters for himself. Uh, there was one game where he spun into the basket and got a three point play, so... Brogdon has been probably the most underrated rookie out of everybody so far. And uh, he's definitely towards the top of um, the rookie ladder and I do agree with that one. He seems like a real NBA ready player for the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, Pascal Siakam of the Toronto Raptors, nice hustle player, starting a power forward for them, playing like 15 to 20 minutes a night. He's pretty raw, he can't really shoot or have any post moves or even grab a lot of rebounds, but he's shown defense and he's shown hustle and I guess it's working out for him. I'll also mention Isaiah Whitehead had some promising moments with Jeremy Lin out. If we go down the top 10, Ben Simmons, he hasn't played, so there's not much we can say there, but it is pretty wild that... Simmons and Embiid are going to be on the same team here, so seems that trusting the process eventually worked out, even if the process was a little rough. Uh, Brandon Ingram for the Lakers at number two. For some reason, I'm seeing people saying that Ingram is a bust. He's averaging eight points, two assists, four rebounds in 27 minutes a game for the Lakers. Has the scoring been there as of right now? I mean, eight points is not bad, but the, uh, the percentages have not been good for Ingram. 
Look, he's coming off the bench, and he's being asked to play a, a type of role for the Lakers, and I think he's embracing it really well. I mean, four rebounds a game in your rookie season, that's just good. That shows me he could be someone who could average like seven or eight boards a game once he's starting and being asked to do more. But the playmaking has been really solid as well. Uh, there have been there's been eight games this season where Ingram has had at least three assists. That's a damn good sign for a rookie. Coming off the bench and oftentimes D'Angelo Russell or Jordan Clarkson or Lou Williams are dribbling the ball. So for Ingram to be having a nice number of assists and making some nice passes, that's really good. So I think he's playing well. I mean, last night he nearly had a triple-double against the Cavs. He had 9 points, 9 assists, and 10 rebounds. So I think the fact that his offense has really not come along just yet, but he's already doing things in terms of rebounding and playmaking, that just shows me that once he gets more comfortable with scoring in the NBA, which of course he's going to do because of how good he was in college and he's a natural scorer, then he's going to be fine, man. I could see him putting up 20-something points, like five or six assists based on his playmaking so far. I think Ingram's going to be great. Uh, the shot is just not falling at the moment. And based on some highlights I have seen from Ingram this year, He's pretty smart when it comes to cutting at the right time to receive a pass from a driving point guard or whoever. And he's also not afraid of contact, even though he has a thin frame. So once the jumper starts falling, he's going to be fine. As for the third pick, Jalen Brown, he is on a tight leash with Brad Stevens. There was a stretch of five straight games where he played less than 10 minutes. And in the next six games, he played like almost 20 minutes each game. So... He does make his mistakes out there. Sometimes he blows a defensive assignment or he gets a little too excited on offense. But I do think for the most part, Jalen has looked good. I've liked his composure. He, uh, for the most part, seems like he's pretty under control as a rookie. He has shown an ability to beat guys off the dribble, to finish inside. He's been really good on the open floor, which was to be expected given that he's an athlete. Uh, the three-pointer's also been better than I thought it was going to be, 35%. He is not asked to do too much for these Celtics at the moment, so his numbers are going to be a little down. But uh, I have liked most of what I've seen from Jalen Brown. His uh, efficiency overall, I mean, 46 from the field, 35 from three is good. And his defense has been nice, although there have been a couple of mess-ups here and there that'll get him yanked from the game. Things that rookies just do. So I think the positive outweighs the negative with Jalen. I don't know if he's ever going to be like a 20-plus point scorer, but if he can be like a f efficient 15 to 17 point player who can hit from outside and be a force on the open floor and defend multiple positions, then I think he can be really good. Drajan Bender of the Suns, he just hasn't really had a consistent stretch of minutes. He's averaging 11 minutes on the season. Uh, I think he can be a shooter as well as a versatile defensive player. Hopefully he can just get a bit stronger so he can hang around inside the paint against NBA big men, but he just hasn't really played enough, man. Now, Chris Dunn of the T-Wolves, I'll be 100% honest with you, this is like the one rookie who I haven't seen much of. It is like kind of the toughest one for me to gauge. The way I look at it is with Zach Levine and Andrew Wiggins, which is two guys who have the ball in their hands a decent amount of the time, as well as Ricky Rubio, it's kind of tough for Chris Dunn to really leave his imprint on this team as a ball handler and a playmaker. There was a recent game against the San Antonio Spurs where Dunn hit a couple of jumpers off of pick and rolls where he was the ball handler. So I think a moment like that is when you see what he can be. But given that he's either playing with Wiggins or Levine or an entire second unit, because we know Thibodeau loves to play the entire bench... I think it hasn't been the perfect situation around Chris Dunn for him to really go off. But also in that Spurs game, there were some moments where Wiggins was standing in the corner and Dunn was able to run pick and roll with um, Towns. And it actually resulted in him finishing at the rim well. So I think Chris Dunn is good. I just think it hasn't been the perfect situation for him early in the season. Now for Buddy Heald, in his last nine games, he's been on fire. Shooting 50% from three while taking over four a game. And it seems that the Buddy Heald we all expected to be killing it from the opening night. He's starting to come on here. He's having moments where he's just open. 
from either Drew Hall to Anthony Davis pick and rolls or finding an open spot on a fast break for a three, which is good. He's also good at just moving without the ball, which is to be expected given that he's a shooter. Uh, but he's also been creating his own shot as well. There have been times when uh, he'll hit someone with a couple of quick dribble moves and then he'll pull up for a three over him or he'll score in the pick and roll off of a three. So Buddy's doing well. And uh, there was one highlight I saw specifically where it was like Ray Allen-esque with how smooth he was able to come off of a screen, rise up and hit like a mid-range jumper that just dropped right through the net Remember Ray Allen when it was like the ball knew that it was supposed to go in the hoop? It looked the same way with Buddy, so he's starting to come on, so that's good for the Pelicans. And it also seems like he hasn't been afraid to attack the paint either, so Buddy could be a real scorer for the Pelicans, he just kind of struggled out of the gate. Uh, now for Jamal Murray, he's been uh, pretty exciting for the Nuggets. His three-pointer is at 36% on the year, and... He's not really being asked to do much with the ball in his hands. He's often either cutting to the rim or coming off of screens for a quick pass, which then he'll immediately go inside off of like one dribble, or he'll come off of screens and shoot a three-pointer, or he's just getting stuff on the open floor. Very rarely is he actually having the ball in his hands with the opportunity to create. But even with that, Jamal Murray seems like a guy who can be a really good shooter. He's not um, been hesitant to attack the paint and finish at the rim. I think Murray as well as Buddy Heald, two guys who really look like they can be big time scorers in the NBA. I just want the Nuggets to give uh, Murray the ball a little bit more. Uh, Marquise Chris of the Phoenix Suns, who according to Harella Bob is the worst starting player in the NBA. Here's the thing with Chris, he's definitely an athlete. His awareness, especially on defense, is pretty bad. He gets lost a lot of the time, whether it be blowing an assignment or being a step too slow. You're just going to have to be better, given that he is a natural athlete. It seems like he can be good on that side of the floor. Um, and offensively, I mean, he does use his athleticism to get put back dunks or just be out on the fast break. And he's actually been kind of okay from three the past couple games. So I do think we have a guy who can be an athlete, a hustle player and uh, maybe even a decent enough shooter. It's just, uh, can he really play defense? He's only 19 years old. I think we can give him a couple of years to figure it out. Now the last two selections of the top 10, we have Jakob Pertle of the Toronto Raptors and Thon Maker of the Milwaukee Bucks. Pretty much neither one of them has played that much. Pertle uh, had a, f a few games in a row where he was playing early in the season. He's pretty much out of the rotation since. So I can't really have much of an opinion on him. And then Thon Maker has played like barely any time at all for the Bucks this year. I think he's played like 29 minutes total. With uh, Thon, there's a guy who's legitimately 7 feet who shows an ability as an athlete, a ball handler, and a shooter. I think the Bucks saw their situation and they were like, look, we got Giannis who we believe is one of the best players in the league. And it seems that they were right on that based on the season he's having. We have Jabari, who's exciting. We have Middleton. Let's take a bit of a risk with our 10th overall pick for a guy who we think can fit into what we're doing with tall players and being super versatile, even if it's going to take a while. So I think that's what they did with Maker, and it is a bit of a risk, but I do think that they are. They've played well, they've been exciting, and Chris Middleton has also been injured, so I don't know. We, we have no clue with Maker. It's going to take a couple of years. So I just named a whole bunch of rookies. Hopefully the rookies I named are on your team. And if they weren't, um, eh, they'll probably be good anyway. Because I probably just forgot them. Because that's what I do when I make these videos. I always forget somebody. Thank you for watching. And I'm out.